Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing an unboxing, installation, and review of the EVGA CLC360, which is a 360mm AIO, and I will include, at the end, I will include temps of my Ryzen 5 3600, stock at 3.6GHz, and overclocked at 4.2GHz at the end, just for reference. And if you are getting an AIO for more aesthetics rather than better cooling performance, I wouldn't recommend going with this because, first of all, it's just, it has controllable RGB, but I'm sure you'll see it later, better later in the video. But the only RGB is an EVGA logo. And some people really won't like that branding. But for some people, it'll match their graphics cards and you might like that. But you can definitely find better looking AIOs on the market. Okay, now it's time for the unboxing. I'm sorry about my messy desk area, but I really don't have anywhere else to shoot this video today. So the box comes with this black casing, which has all the information and directions, all these languages. Okay, so you can just slide the cover off. I already broke the seal just to make it a bit easier. It has this EVGA branded tape. And yes, I forgot to mention this. This does come with a five year warranty with EVGA. I'm not sure if EVGA has good customer service or if this is just um, uh, a marketing something that they say for marketing so what's this here is the mounting hardware am4 it has an intel backplate yes there is a usb that you connect to your motherboard and it gives you access to the flow control software which is one of the main selling points for this aio okay so it looks like these are for the fans so you would plug the fans into this and not directly into the motherboard if you want to control the fans with the flow control software. It does come with thermal paste pre-applied, but if you want extra thermal paste in the box, you'll have to pay like 20 bucks extra. But I didn't pay for that because the stock thermal paste won't be too good and when I need to replace it, I would rather buy some better thermal paste. And here, I think this is the pump header you plug into the motherboard. And the AIO itself. I think it has the fans pre-installed on them. Yes, yeah, so it does have the fans pre-installed. They're especially designed for better performance. And they say it's less noise. You see this, this curve right here? They say the EVGA website says it produces less noise, but all the reviews on Amazon say the exact opposite. So that's another reason not to use these fans. And I would use these fans, because, but I would run them at a low speed. But I can't because as a push-pull configuration, but I can't because my case doesn't have that kind of room because of the power supply. Um, power supply shard? I don't know. Power supply casing thing. I forgot what it's called. And so this is what the radiator looks like. The tubing. Alright, so, and this is what the water block looks like. There's an Asetek pump in here. Thermal paste covered by plastic. Alright, and the only LEDs on this is the EVGA logo, as I mentioned earlier. It does, it looks like the Intel mounting bracket right now. So I will have to switch that out with AM4. And yeah, I'll film my installation next. Now I'm going to change the AMD bracket for the Intel bracket.
Okay, I got it. So I took off the stock fans. Now it's time to screw in the fans that I am going to use. So for installation, it took me a long time to do it and I got really impatient so I stopped recording. Anyways, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna show you how to install it, but like as a model. So this is a mounting bracket. I can't, I'm not gonna take out my cooler because it took me a long time and I don't have any spare thermal paste. So this is the backplate. They supply you with an Intel backplate, but not an AMD one because AMD ones come with the motherboard. So the backplate goes behind the motherboard. Then you put the Intel mounting bracket on it. Align the four holes. Wait, no. I mean, first you have to screw these standoffs in. So you would screw these standoffs into each corner And then what you would do is you put this, the mounting bracket on top of each one of the standoffs. And I don't have any, they don't supply, they only supply you with four bolts. So I'm using washers just to model it. You would screw the bolts down and it would secure the thing in place. What I was having trouble with was I was putting, I was able to put like three of the four bolts on but the fourth one just wouldn't catch on the thread. And so it's, it took me like two hours to figure out what to do. And I'm gonna show you how I did it. So here are the four standoffs. And here are the four so-called um, screws, but they're actually washers since the screws are already installed. So what I did was I knew which ones standoffs I was gonna put in the, the top top left, top right, bottom left, and bottom right. And so I would align each screw with a stand off that it, act, it could actually screw into it. So if this so-called sc screw can fit into this standoff, then I put this right above it, this screw. And if this can fit here, then I put it right above this one. And if this can fit here, I'll put it right above this one. And if this can fit on this, I'll put it on this one. And when I eventually screw these standoffs into the backplate and put the mounting bracket on top of it, 
then I'll make sure to use these corresponding screws on this specific, on each specific standoff. So that's how you solve the problem I was having. So this is what it looks like when it's all installed. I'm not, uh, I haven't really cable managed it yet. I'm planning on opening my PC again soon and I'm upgrading it. So I'm not gonna cable manage it fully yet. So once this is all screwed in, these are the like screws I was talking about, these little things, they detach. Um, there's a thing here, a wire here that goes into the pump header the usb cable it comes with you insert it into the bottom i wish it was on the top for easier cable management but but when it's down here it kind of looks it's harder to hide and you route it behind and under here you'll see a usb header on your motherboard and you plug it into the usb header This is what the pump sounds like. Um, the fans are all off, as you can see. I, the GPU is not working, so the fans are off too. All right, this is at a hundred percent. This is at around seventy-five percent. This is at fifty percent. This is at 25%. And this is at zero, like. It doesn't really change, but it's not, it's pretty quiet also. So this is the EVGA flow control software. You just go to search up EVGA flow control software download and you'll be able to download it. So here is lead sync. It's basically if you have other devices that can be synced up and are compatible with this, they'll all sync up the colors, kind of like the Corsair IQ software. I'm not sure why my temps are so high right now. Maybe when I shut it off. I've been using my PC a lot today. Maybe when I shut it off it'll go lower. Anyway, here is where you control the pump and fan speeds. Fan, you can set up a fan curve, um, basically automating where the temperatures are, but I don't need to worry about this because I don't have the fans. I recommend you always run your pump at 100%, especially considering this is a five year warranty and it doesn't really make that much extra noise. Here is where you can put the lead on the RGB and basically this area is um, here's the fans the pump speed here's the CPU temp cool it temp overall I think this is a great cooler especially considering that at the time I purchased it, it only cost $99. Right now the price is raised to $140, but that's still lower than the MSRP, which is $160. My temps are great and I think I'll continue over it to I'll continue to use my CPU overclocked since the temps are are really good. And I really like the, the way the RGB reflects off of the metal sides of the cooler. It just really looks good. And it I think it makes up for the fact that it doesn't very, have a very good RGB design on it. And the main thing I don't like about this is that the USB is at the bottom of the AIO, of the water block, I mean. And this is bad because you need to route your cable across the motherboard and it would be much better if they put the USB port on the top of the water block because then you could just route the cable up and it would be out of sight. But the way it is now, you just, it just looks really bad. It just interferes with the RAM and yeah. Unless you 
mounted upside down, but then the EVGA logo would be upside down, and I think that would even look worse. And I really like the flow control software, it's really easy to use, it's helpful because you get to see the coolant temp, you get to control the pump speeds, if you use the fans, you get to control the fan speeds instead of a fan curve, it's just a really good software. If you've made it this far in the video, thanks for watching, and I'd really appreciate it if you liked this video and subscribed to my channel. Thanks, see you guys in the next one.